by you to Pakistan. W was your mother a great influence in your life all through your growing up period? Very much. She was a great influence uh, in, in terms of her views about um, uh, uh, life, politics, and even in sport. Uh, she was a great influence and she gave me a lot of love. I was very close to her. If she was such a central part of your life all through that period, it's uh, terribly difficult, I suppose, even now for you to not forget her, but to put her aside, put her memory aside. You know, I, I, but you see, as a Muslim, I accept death. I mean, I know that, you know, everyone has to die. And you accept it, and I would have come to terms with it much easier. But I think what, uh, what left a lasting effect on me was the fact that, you know, she could have been saved. It was a, it, I mean, had it been diagnosed early, it was a straightforward operation, and she would have, she would have lived. But I think what I could not come to terms with was the pain in which she died. You know, I, I saw someone that close to me for two months, I saw an extreme pain, which I think only people who, who people who've seen cancer patients, only they can know how, how they suffer. And I think that suffering and watching her die, that sort of touched me uh, very deep, and it changed my, it was like a watershed in my life. You did an amazing thing um, the other night, and you, you uh, pulled in a tremendous number of celebrities, beautiful women, but that was the first time you'd ever stood up and said, I want you to help me to raise money. It was the first time you'd ever appealed to any of your friends to come forward and do that for outside you. Outside Pakistan, yes. In Pakistan, there was a big response. But outside, I wasn't confident, you know. I wasn't sure how people would react to a hospital in Pakistan. My main idea was to tap the Pakistanis living uh, in Britain. Your mother said something about she didn't want you to, to bring back a Western girl as a bride. To Pakistan. Yeah, well, I was 18 then, and um, she she was scared that if I marry a Western girl, uh, she thought that either I would live in England mm -hmm. or I would come and uh, bring her back, and eventually she would again take me back to England, or I would have a broken home because the interracial marriages have not been have not had a very good record. It's difficult for Western women to live there. And so that was her main argument. But every time you went home, did she have, or your family, did they have lined up for you a whole lot of girls who you had to go and see and look at and think about and all of that or not? How well, did it work? Well, you see, I grew up in this house where I had four very independent, educated, and strong-minded sisters and a mother who was, again, very strong-minded. So, you know, they never agreed to one girl. <laughs> I mean, I never remember that. You know, I, recently my sisters were, uh, we had all my sisters who were all over the world, we, we got together recently. And they suddenly they started giving me hell. Why aren't you married? You know, you're getting old and all this. So I, I had to tell them, I said, look, you've ne have you ever uh, suggested a girl to me? And yet, you see, the public sees you with a long line of very beautiful women ranging from... Emma Sargent, Susanna Constantine, Denise Lewis, and they think, how do they handle it? I mean, how do the women you've known handle the fact that you will probably one day go back to Pakistan and have an arranged marriage? You probably will do that still. How have they, how have they coped with it? Well, for a start, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how they cope with it. Um, most of these people you're saying are not really uh, my girlfriends or anything. They were just friends. So they never had to worry about decisions about my uh, marriage. You say you never come close to an English girl here, close enough to think about I suppose about I marriage. came to uh, one girl who I came quite close to marrying, and it didn't happen. Who was that? That was Emma. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, since then, uh, I haven't really been, I haven't even thought of marriage. Are you sure? Very sure. Are you cynical in a sense? Because... You know, your celebrity and the person you are and this sort of sex symbol that you have become means that a lot of women will be attracted to you because of who you are and what kind of publicity you can give them. Is, is that something that kind of annoys you, bothers you, frustrates you? Well, a lot of it is very funny because, you know, I mean, you can't take it seriously. I mean, you know, if you go out with someone who you just escorting someone because at times people invite couples. So you, uh, someone you know, and I know a lot of uh, 
women who are just friends and you take them out the photographs taken and and there's a whole gossip about you so you can't take that seriously i know in one sense i know what you mean but in another sense i feel that it's so crucial for you to have the kind of press that you have it's good press you go back to pakistan and you're a kind of hero a kind of demigod then, because of the way you've been built up over the I'm years i'm not sure that happens because you know the, re the reason i've been built up in pakistan has nothing to do with me being with women or mm -hmm. my, me being with well, they, they, it's a talking point isn't it every magazine it's, i pick up and i read about you it, but it's that's what in they England. say back in pakistan the kind of taxi drivers that stop and ask what your you know, love life is like in England. And I think the, this is not normally this the is, case. This is all the press making it up. It's, it's definitely not the case. I mean, they do ask, they are interested in my marriage. They very rarely talk about women. They're, they're, it's a cricket crazy country. When you go back to Pakistan, I know you go regularly, do you feel alienated in any way from it because you've spent a long time in England, because you've you know, been to school here and you've worked out of here? Is there any sense of alienation? Well, Pakistan is my home always has been and I've never had any confusion about that. Um, I, I've come to England first to study for four years and then I came to play professional cricket here because uh, England is the only place which plays cricket in the summer. And I have so many friends over the years, you know, so it's like a second home. But the winter, come September, I have this feeling, you know, I start longing to go back. You're very easy about it all, aren't you? Very cool on the surface anyway so tell me how you relax how you, do you unwind for me uh, I suppose if I'm really run down I would like to go away uh, in the wild you know just camp out for a while I think that probably relaxes me more it sort of if I'm really run down or I'm drained mentally I think that probably gives me more energy and uh, and, and staying power it, it sort of I, vitality I'm again fresh again I went away in August to the mountains in Pakistan and I think I came back so fresh and uh, so, so live and I'm ready for, to go back again now.